Are you taking proton pump inhibitors for acid reflux or indigestion or other digestive issues? My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to look at the impact of proton pump inhibitors in vitamin B12 deficiency, how that comes about, how prevalent it is, how long you need to take the PPIs in order for this to happen, and other things you should be looking at with regard to proton pump inhibitors and vitamin B12 deficiency. As I said, my name is Dr. Taranella, and if you're new to this channel, I just want you to know that I make these videos to help you go beyond the basics of your health, whether it's a confusing lab test, diagnosis, or symptom like vitamin B12 deficiency. I make these videos to help you get a better understanding of what's happening with your body and your health. So if you like this kind of information on nutrition, hormones, health optimization, click on the like button and subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaim, the information contained in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as treatment for any medical condition or a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical professional. It should be used as an educational guide to deepen your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, let's check out this topic on PPIs and vitamin B12 deficiency. So in this video, we want to look at proton pump inhibitors and vitamin B12 deficiency. Proton pump inhibitors, or PPIs as they're often referred to it, is a class of medications used to treat gastroesophageal reflux disease and other conditions that involve too much stomach acid. PPIs work by blocking the production of stomach acid, which can, in some cases, help relieve these symptoms, heartburn, reflux, nausea, burning in your stomach and esophagus, and other things surrounding too much acid or acid going up into your esophagus. So while there are some benefits there and these can be helpful in the short term, they do come with costs. And it's the reduction in your body's ability to break down and therefore absorb certain foods and nutrients from that food. That is the cost you need to be aware of. So in this case, PPIs and acid blockers in general increase the risk of vitamin B12 deficiency because they block the absorption of vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is an essential nutrient that's important for various functions in the body, including red blood cell production, nerve function, and even DNA synthesis. B12 is absorbed in the small intestine, and there's not a lot of acid in the small intestine. But in order for B12 to be absorbed, you need enough intrinsic factor. PPIs reduce the amount of stomach acid called HCL that's produced in very specified cells. Those same cells that are producing the hydrochloric acid also produce intrinsic factor. So when you reduce the production of HCL, you also produce the production of intrinsic factor. They kind of go together. So with this, there is less absorption of vitamin B12. How much less absorption is there? Well, depending on which acid blocker you're taking will depend on how much reduction in HCL or intrinsic factor is occurring. But generally speaking, PPIs reduce the amount of hydrochloric acid by a lot, say like 60 to 80%. And the higher your dose, the more of that reduction you're going to have. So B12 is absorbed in our bodies and those acid blockers generally are lasting all day long, 24 hours. I think different ones have different half-lives. And of course, not everyone is going to fit into the bell curve the same way. So you may break it down sooner than, than other people. And therefore, some of that intrinsic factor is being produced. But what we want to do now is look at what does the published research say about likelihood of B12 being deficient in someone that takes PPIs? So a study published in the Journal of Gastroenterology in 2010 found that people who took PPIs for two years or more were more likely to have low levels of vitamin B12 than people that did not take PPIs. That definitely makes sense based on what we're saying here. And the risk for vitamin B12 deficiency was even higher in people that were a little bit older over age 65. And that's likely because as we get older, we reduce the amount of hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factors. Well, just as we age, that's a natural thing that happens. 
So again, PPIs don't shut off hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factor completely. It's a reduction that will vary from each individual, but it's about a 70% reduction and other acid blockers will reduce it by less than that. So in this particular study, the vitamin B12 deficiency was defined as a serum vitamin B12 level of less than 100 picograms per ml. This is much lower than most lab cutoffs. And keep in mind that even having a serum B12 of less than 450 picograms per ml could still be enough to cause insufficient vitamin B12 levels in your body to where you start having manifestations, symptoms, or problems, or pathologies from not enough B12, like numbness, tingling, feeling unbalanced, and things like that. So if you get to 100, there's a good chance that you'll be having some negative consequences, repercussions from this, probably minimum fatigue, maybe even some memory impairment, really depends on other factors as well. So that same study found that people who took PPIs for two years or more were 75% more likely to have serum B12 levels at that 100 picograms per ml or less compared to people that didn't take it at all. In other words, for every 100 people that took PPIs, 75 of them were going to have that 100 picograms per ml or less. So they didn't necessarily say what it was like at one year, six months, three months, but it's definitely going down as soon as you start taking them. The longer you're on it, the more potential for problem. Some people definitely do need to take these medicines for short term and sometimes even long term. And if you're taking them over the long term, you could say, well, I'll just supplement B12, but you're also more likely to develop something called atrophic gastritis, just meaning that your body's decreasing the production of hydrochloric acid and the intrinsic factor. So what do you do? Well, if you're on PPIs, or any type of acid blocker, definitely want to have your B12 level checked on a somewhat regular basis. You may even want to do some more advanced testing, methylmalonic acid and homocysteine levels to make sure that the intracellular B12 is high enough. I'll put a link to a type of B12 product that we use in our practice in the description if you want to check that out. So how'd I do? Did that help you better understand proton pump inhibitors and vitamin B12 efficiency? Hopefully it does. If you do have follow-up questions on this topic, drop them in the comment section and let me know what you think of the video. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.